All right, back. Click this, the Kevin Nash podcast. Um, the uh, probably the biggest news a story of you know I was looking at the ratings of everybody's shows like in the last few weeks, and like everyone got a pop for the Vince story. Everyone got the bump um, ac- across the business, and uh, it's probably going to be the biggest wrestling story of the year, right, Vince? Yeah, had, absolutely. Had to yeah. Be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, on the heels of this, uh, you know, Triple H is getting all the ink too. In 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 every story now that that references uh, Vince's uh, retirement, the transition of creative to. Uh, Triple H, Kev's allowed to call him Paul, um, uh, is is the story. So I wanted to take an episode to get inside Triple H. It's kind of an enigma. Um, you, I, I don't read a lot of dirt about him. I don't read a lot of stuff about him in all my years covering this business, whatever you call it, whatever the fuck I used to do. Um, he He was a guy that was usually off the radar. So I thought, who better than his best friend? Uh, to talk about him as a person, a worker, philosophy of, and maybe by learning the artist, you'll learn about the work to come. So I first want to know when you first became aware of him. We first, we, we were on the road uh, you know, every Saturday, Sunday, my, and once, like I, we, we talked last week, once we did those tapings and it was you know, 21, 23, whatever it was, straight days. So we're always on the road on the weekends. And um, a lot of times, you know, for some reason, like uh, weekends you didn't travel. It didn't like, wasn't such a push. It was usually larger towns on the weekends that we ran. And you know, so if you were in Chicago, you'd, you know, you'd stay in Chicago and then maybe make it after, you know, you know stay an extra night or something like that. And, uh, We'd always watch the WCW Saturday show, and he was Tara Ryzen at the time. I was That's his, right. That's right. Yeah, I was his character, and he was like he was like our favorite guy. Like he was like the Click's favorite guy. No, we'd be like, oh come on, man, Tara Ryzen's on TV. From a fan standpoint, yeah, just we liked to we like we just you know we just he was just our guy. So when he so he um, we were somewhere. I don't know where we. I want to think we were in Massachusetts or someplace, but uh, Kowalski, Killer Kowalski, had broke Paul in. So Kowalski brought Paul to TV, and Paul had like on slacks and a fucking uh, sports coat, you know, polo, and um, he walked by us. And then Scott did that thing where you like, like walk behind somebody step for step. <laughs> Paul basically, like Paul turns around and looks, and there's fucking Scott, you know, fucking with him. So then he had his tryout match, and we were all at the, uh, of course, it was a fucking monitor sellout. And uh, then he got, he, he did really well. And um, we tried to get him, like, immediately. Who you traveling with me? He said, well, I'm with, I'm with, you know, I'm with Kowalski. So, like, okay, well, next set of TVs, you're with us. And, uh, why though? Well, how, how do you get in, how do you get there so fast? Because we'd already, I mean, he was already like he, like he was um, anointed before he got in because he was he was terrorizing, and then he went out there and tore it up. So just like fuck, man, like he he was. I mean, he had the kind of he worked like you know like he worked like the rest of us did, you know, right? And um, plus the fact that he wouldn't like leave Kowalski. You know, like he would not, like I came with, I came with Walter. I'm just going to stay with Walter. Right. You know, it's like, you know, a little bit of old school that we all appreciate. And, um, the next, the next, uh, trip we have is like, I think we're in like Portland, Maine. It's the first, first, uh, night. And kid eats, kid goes in a couple too many somas and we're to Denny's and he fucking just, I mean, shaking like full shakes and we have to basically just get we got to bail we just, we got to get out before you know we get in trouble so we get out there and like you know sean like kind of gives kid kind of a smack in the face like come on man snap out of it and scott gives him one and 
Paul <laughs> reaches across and gives him one. We're all like, hey, motherfucker. <laughs> it's your first day. And, Jumped right in. Good for oh, you. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, it was one of those deals where we were up all night wrestling with kid in a in a cold shower. Like, like making him go in the shower and then walk him up and down the hallway so he didn't, you know, we didn't know if he was going to OD or what. And um, so, uh, I mean, this goes on all night. He starts to f- fade out. We're like, come on. And he's fighting, man. He's, you know, he's wiry and strong. He's like maniac strong. It's taken all of us to hold him in this ice cold shower and walk him up and down the hallways. We got the, you know, the robe from the the, hall, the hotel that we're putting him in to walk him up and down the hallway. Finally, at about six o'clock, you know, he falls asleep. And then I just sit there and I made sure he was, he was breathing. And at about nine o'clock, he woke up. And I was just sitting there looking at him. He just looked at me and goes, Love you, man. Just want to uh, go ahead and take this time to say uh, thank you for saving my life. And he just turned and went to bed, and I was like, "Yeah, don't mention it, man. We're we're, we're cool." So that was like 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 Paul's uh, intro to traveling with us. Like the first day is like, "What the fuck?" I was gonna say, I I, I never would have gotten in a car with you again. That would that would have been it. I'm not babysitting till nine in the morning. Well, you know. I'm not. I'm not cut out for it. I can never be a, m- a member of the clique. Yeah. Now, I-, I wanted to ask you though. Um, now, Sean Waltman, now, work rate. I want to talk about work rate. HBK, Scott, uh, uh, Waltman. Uh, well, Cornet gave the verdict on you already with the five moves. But when you guys would ride with someone, was the work rate something? that was important that got that guy over with you yeah to be on the road i mean because it's so different when when you're uh and i'll always make references you know like i was for the money it was like, you know you don't do it it, it wasn't for the money back then because we weren't getting paid shit you wanted my balls stuck to the inside of my thigh here Ugh. adjusting the bedpan yeah so um but um, when we got in the car at night, man, it was fucking, it was like it was like Brady or somebody watching films. Like we went over everybody's match, spots, ba da 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 We never, it wasn't like, you know, name your top five albums. Nah, why well, can we talk business 24-7? And if you weren't in that mindset, then there wasn't a place for you in that car. The, Did the, all of you want to be in a creative position in a major company, or nah. did you all just enjoy performing? We just wanted to. Get, we wanted to have the ability to go out, work with each other, and then for the next four and a half hours, get in a van, drink beer, and put each other over how great we were. Right. No aspirations <laughs> to to be on no. the writing team with no. Bishop booking with Bishop no. someday or. But I mean, there was the, like like Paul showed like early signs of brilliance when they booked the second ladder match, and Vince basically told um, Scott and Sean that they could not use the ladder as a weapon because at that point we weren't competing against we were, we were we were competing against Disney, so we had to uh, tame down a ladder match, and. <laughs> We were in uh, we're, we're in Wooster, I think, at a Hampton Inn, and we're just sitting there, and Paul just kind of pieced this thing together, and um, you know everybody kind of chipped in, but like Paul la- laid the skeleton, and uh, that was kind of one of those things where I just just in my mind I was just like wow, you know, like the time when 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 uh, Shawn Michaels got like knocked out and we did the thing where the announcers stopped and the boys came from the back mm-hmm. with the kick, you know, it's when he lost his smile and all that yes. shit. Well, we booked that. Sean thinks he was part of it. Sean was unconscious when we booked it. That was about 30% me, 30% Paul and 30% uh, Scott and, 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 and Sean. But it was like Paul and I were up front. So we were kind of, like oh and then right because that was just right after Ripken had uh, 
beaten uh, Garrick's streak for games. Oh, and remember they took they took him around the, the a, a, a car around the uh, like the outfield and everything, and they they were silent on ESPN. They didn't say a word. They just let the the the, the moment become organic. And it was such a uh, the power just, of, of yeah that stood so on we, its we own. So we wanted, we wanted yeah. to do the same thing. We wanted like the announcers not to you know go into any bullshit. Because it, it, you know, to this day, I was watching. Uh, I, I was watching AEW a couple of weeks ago. I actually pulled my son in on this, and he think somebody got hurt, and one of the uh, people called medic. Medic. I'm like, what is this fucking Saving Private Ryan? <laughs> Don't you do that at home when someone needs? <laughs> well, I always medic? thought for, for for years, I always thought when you got injured, fucking, you called a referee because you know three ref three referees would come down, you know, and fuck. So, but um, I want to touch on the the Soma story for a minute. But Paul Paul Triple H was he didn't do drugs as far as I know, right? Is no, that, right. Uh, didn't even really drink, from what I understand, right? I, I, I think I got him uh, buzzed in uh, on the last day of a European tour in Switzerland, and only because I, I was pounding, I had him, I, I was uh, pounding uh, pina coladas with him, and he couldn't taste the alcohol, <laughs> and he liked coconut. He was like, "These are good," and all of a sudden, he just just like he didn't take much because he didn't drink. He was just like, "All right, I get it. That's yeah, a cool feeling, not for me." You yeah. worked him with a pina colada to get like Got an episode to. of Gilligan's Island. With, That's right, man. Here, little buddy, <laughs> take a sip. But the thing with Paul is, like, like we got to, like we got close really, really uh, fast because he loves bodybuilding, and like, like you know, like the one of the first couple of conversations we ever had late at night driving was, can you name all the Olympi Mr. Olympias? You know, starting from the. From uh, Larry Scott uh, going forward. Oh my God! Wow. And um, it was just like he was spot on. I mean, bang, 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 bang. And then um, so we started training together. And at that time, there was a guy named Mike Menzer who was doing this thing called heavy duty training. And Dorian Yates had kind of taken it and ra ratcheted it up a level. So you did like you know the the basic philosophy of it was you can. Take a stick of dynamite and set it on a concrete floor, and you can tap it with a hammer a thousand times, and nothing will happen. But if you take a 25 pound sledgehammer and hit that stick of dynamite, there's a chance that it'll fucking explode. That's kind of what the, the process was, and what you did is you trained these super intense, long, single sets, and you took muscles to, to you know, positive failure, negative failure. Uh, rest pause. I mean, you just, just and you would, but you, it was a, it was a, a short, like you could do a body part in 25, 30 minutes. Were you into like, uh, Vince was very into bodybuilding too. You started that yeah. World Bodybuilding Federation, which God. anyone could have seen was going to be a disaster. What, um, oh, the, remember, the only reason that failed is because of the drug trial. Well, the drug trial too, but what, where could you, what could you have aired the, the the excitement of professional wrestling which was wwe's wwf at the time's calling card wbf it was it was it's, posing it's, they were trying uh, to make personalities out was, of them yeah i mean i think they were trying to he was trying to to take what what you know what pro bodybuilding was at the time and and, and give those guys personalities like you know yeah i don't know were you a fan was were you tuning in every week no because i mean it's, we we were subsidizing it, <laughs> you know. We were we we're out there banging around subsidizing it. So drinking I mean, that I, Ico I thought, Pro, I thought, baby. I, drinking I thought, some of that Ico I, I Pro. Gary, I thought Gary Stridham had a great physique, but fuck, man, you you you're killing me over here. Was that the baby face that that he kind of put in the like as the uh, the yeah, face of the Stridham was a Stridham. Stridham never won the Olympia. I think he I think, might have won an Arnold or a Night of Champions or something. He was a he was a, I mean he was he was a very gifted bodybuilder. Yeah. Well, we should have him on. We'll talk about uh, the, yeah. the 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 snatch, the snatch and jerk. There's some great names in bodybuilding. I do enjoy hearing someone talk about the clean jerk and the snatch and all that's that all, shit. That's not bodybuilding. That's powerlifting. That's actually Olympic lifting. May I never know the difference. Um, Drugs and Triple H. I was going to ask you, he seems like an odd choice to be in the clique. 
because you guys were notorious partiers. That's part of the click. When you think about the click, you think of a couple of things. Number one, the power play element to being a member of the click and the headache you gave any promoter. And B, partying. He did not party. It's odd to me. He seemed like an outlier to be, a, uh, to be part of your group. What would he do? You guys are with the 34 Somos, the 33 Somos. That was you're early. Sleeping, you're sleeping on an amplifier. No, What's Paul doing? That was early in the run because it, 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 when Paul joined us, I was I was a world champion. So, I mean, I wasn't – I had too many I, – I was I was way – my reins had been way pulled back as far as uh, uh, how hard I was running. It was like I was the fucking uh, bodyguard – had one spot a night I had to remember, and I could just fucking go out there and just be like, man, do I feel fucking rough. Did that make uh, Paul always the designated driver, maybe, uh, for you guys? After the I show? mean, a lot of the times you did, but there was a lot of times that I drove. You know, it was, it was, it was always nice to have somebody I knew, and he knew uh, vice versa, that would, would be awake to talk to. Because fucking four hours, man, with... With you know FM radio back in the day was was pretty pretty rough, right? Who had control of the radio when you guys were in the car? Was it whoever was driving, or you guys all had? Anything? Yeah, most of the times. It was really weird because when I came when I came in, like, um, Shawn Michaels and Scott Hall were fucking country music guys. Scott was yeah, yeah. So I was I was just like. All right, can we, can I maybe play a couple of my fucking, I throw a Luther Vandross in there somewhere. As soon as this Conway Twitty's over, can yeah. I get some uh, some of the Commodores or something? Yeah. yeah. Um, he's with China in 96. Is he riding with you still? When Because there is some overlap. You go to WCW in 96, but there is some overlap, right? Yeah, we leave in June. Right. Yeah, so we're uh, yeah. So Joni by proxy becomes click, or Joey? just the, yeah. No, because we're she, gone. Yeah, but 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 he's not with her before that. No, she wasn't there when I was there. Okay, the first time she came, she came along like the, you know when when they started the DX thing. Why didn't he go to WCW in 96? I know great things would come with him with DX and everything, but he had a chance to go, right, make the money you guys were making. Did you talk about it? Did, did I think he, no, because he had just signed, he had another, like, you know, it was, it was a three-year deal. He had another year left. Was there any consideration that he might go when the deal was over? No, because by the time he got out of the dog, I mean, he, he was in the doghouse at you know for so long after that uh, curtain call, and he just you know he was a good soldier, man. He just took his punishment and yeah, you know, and got it and got a spot. Do you talk to you about it? The yeah. the time that he stayed after you left, and he had to yeah do the uh, penance. Well, he was. I call. think we. I think we're all kind of pissed that Sean didn't do a better job of protecting him. But mm -hmm. um, Sean was in a bad place at that time, too. And it was, I mean, Paul really, you know, did the best he could with that. And then eventually, I think Timmy White, God bless him, man, um, became the, uh, the caretaker for Sean. We've talked multiple times in different things we've done together about the curtain call. And it's been talked about ad nauseum. But the point I want to make is Vince didn't have the problem with this. That everybody seemed to think he did. You told me on air on something else that you ran it by him. You, I think we talked here uh, yeah. one week that, yeah. that you were like, no, he, we he, said he's, he, he said, right to, when I was there, he said to, to Shawn Michaels, he said, if it's important to you, important it's, to it's, you. It's right. if it's important to you, it's important to me, go ahead and do it. So why is their punishment meted out after the fact? I think it, I think the fact that that was it. And then we actually left. Like what do you we think were, you were going to stay? Hey, I I talked to Briscoe at the garden, and that, that afternoon he said, "Man, he says Vince doesn't know why." I said, "Why don't he come over here and, and talk to me instead of you?" 
You know? mm. So I, 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 you know, I, people, people think that we were going to WCW and it was some juggernaut. That was fucking. The, you got to say it a thousand times. The pay per view before we came was the the monster truck on Cobo Hall. The giant fucking got pushed over the side of the parking garage and landed, you know, twelve stories down, and it was in a main event and got ass raped. The real summer of '92 by the Yeti, Ron Reese. Oh, right. Yeah, you know, so I mean, it's just it was a charming was, visual. Wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't like we were going. Uh, we were going, you know, to to fucking. Uh... But so so maybe it was a so then okay so he says hey, listen this is important to you but then it happens and is this just to send shockwaves through the boys maybe that you know. No one else better try this. Uh, well, he had just lost two of the biggest shit stirs in the fucking company. You know? Yeah. So no, I know. A, but I, I, there would have been an it, element of me that was like, you know, hey, dickbag, behind behind closed doors, you said it's important to you. Now you, I'm not going to get the fucking belt next month because of this shit. You know? No, yeah. But he, Sean had the belt. That was the whole That no. was the whole thing. Sean no. already had the belt. I'm talking about you know, Triple H being denied. Well, he was supposed to. Oh, he King was supposed the, to win. King, King of the Ring. King of the Ring. That's what it was. And that, not the and that ended up. Ring. That ended up going to Steve. Ended up going to 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 Steve. Uh, so you know, I think that everything we did seemed to have some kind of a butterfly effect to everything else. You know, you can fucking hate us all you want, but boy, it just sure is. Uh, I, I, I got, uh, Steve in the front, in the door. I said, man, I got a buddy to Vince, you know, I said, I got a buddy, man. That's fucking like unbelievable, you know? And, you know, they did that stupid ringmaster thing with him. And then eventually, you know, like, you know, you ain't going to hold that motherfucker down. Like Steve was, Steve was driven and, uh, all he needed was that, you know, he needed a, a a little bit of a, a daylight to, you know, to to get his thing going. Mm. So after um. So you're gone, Scott's gone. You're doing your thing now. The the on screen marriage with Steph, right in two thousand. This leads to obviously some real life dating are you guys in touch still i mean you're working elsewhere but you're still yeah. in touch you're still friends yeah. yeah i mean when he was when he was in uh china they came out to the house and stayed in arizona when they came through there we all went and caught a workout i mean it was just we, we stayed friends i think paul was I, i'm almost positive paul was the first person uh in the clique to hold uh my son right so he talked to you when he started dating stephanie Yes. Was this uh, was this a surprise? You obviously knew Steph and the family and, yeah, and Shane yeah. and everybody. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I mean, I've always, you know, I've, you know, I've always been a fan of Steph. So I mean, it was just like, I just was, you know, cu curious how that, you know, how the uh, how his exit strategy worked out. If it, if it didn't work out. No, I'm talking about China. Oh, oh, you no, know, but but it's also valid to say, uh, listen, dude, you're. If this doesn't work out. What's your exit <laughs> strategy here? Black and white T-shirt on the other on the, uh, other, on the other show. <laughs> um, yeah. So okay. So exit strategy with China because she's still there. Obviously, you're saying right. So yeah. she's there. She's in the angle. DX. Uh, uh, they got. They, they, there was some. There was some some tension there. I think Joni said she was gonna in Steph's life and it was uh it was fucked up. Yeah. But uh it works out, I guess. For, you know, for certainly for Triple H and Stephanie and uh Shane McMahon. Where where did you see Shane McMahon's future in the WWE? Where'd you see him possibly sliding into someday? Uh, yeah, I, it was so early into the. I mean, it, it wasn't like there was anybody was was thinking of of events going anywhere. It wasn't like, wow, Stephanie is going to be taking over this, or you know, somebody's going to be doing that, or 
it just, you know, and by the time, um, you know, Paul started getting more office uh, responsibilities, yeah, I remember one time we, we we sat down and he was um he was just getting uh, NXT started. And uh so I went over to full sale and we sat down in the bleachers and we were just talking. And he was just saying how, you know, it's it, it's such a like to shoot wrestling, to work a truck for wrestling, like wrestling uh was such a, a specific, you know, skill set. It wasn't mm-hmm. like and what we did a lot of times when we were at TNT is, you know, the guys that shot wrestling, you know, maybe shot Nitro uh, last week, we, we shot Talladega the next week. You know, so we had we had our, our, our handheld guys, were, were, but some of the guys that worked uh, just basically your, your hard cameras were just, they, they, were, they were rotated in, in and out. Your production, you're talking about your production yeah. st- staff. So but whereas, in a family company, though, I mean, no, no one thought Vince was going. But when, when there's somebody who is the head of the company and the whole family is involved, there has to be discussion about what do you, do you think that'll be his someday, or what do you think they're going to have him do? Is he be telling me what to do some week? Is he going to stay a talent? Maybe where do you think Shane would have would have fit? Was there any discussion about Shane and Stephanie and and where they would have been? Not, not that you know, not that came to, not that I was privy to, not okay. that. You know, I just, and it, and I didn't, it wasn't like something I was going to ask. Cause it I just meant your own mind, knowing Shane, knowing Stephanie. But I heard that he was taking over like, um, the media aspect of it. Yeah. New and, media, and, I think. was new, the Yeah. Department. And it was just like, that was, I, I said to myself, this is perfect. Like he's always, he's always, you know, he's, I guess before he's a cool dude. He's, he's on top of shit. So, you know, if there were going to be new, you know, new revenue streams, you know, they're going to be different things, you know, put somebody that's, uh, that has that vision. When you come back in, uh, with the NWO, right. Are you guys riding together again with Paul? No, no, it's just me and Scott. Right. So. This and Hulk, next... I mean, and Hulk too. Hulk was a I minute, mean, but that was mm-hmm. it was such a short run. Yeah, you know, Hulk didn't make house shows, so me and Scott. Just, oh, that's right. Yeah, me and Scott just got got a Cadillac and just you know made the show the house for so. Put some Merle Haggard on the radio and just roll, right? Ten epic hits. Now Vince gets rid of the NWO. Right. Is it is this because it was Eric's? Uh, could could he have could he have ridden that for five years if he wanted to, or is it just you always shut down the competition's brainchild? Yeah, we were fucked. Yeah. Did did you think it could go? <laughs> did you think? Well, you had well, a well, well, we were, like I said, we were, we were the number one uh, selling T-shirt week one. I had an idea we might we, we might have some traction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh now he's he's not yet in any official position of authority, right? When you come back, no. But I mean, you guys aren't morons. He's he's they're married now. He, you have to be having some consideration that he's going to possibly be in a position of authority with the company. How do maybe not? Maybe you weren't thinking in terms of an executive uh, position, but certainly in the creative and booking and writing like you have right? to realize you have to realize like from my standpoint like my buddy blows his quad uh-huh. and um I'm, i i you know like i'm just more worried like that point i mean me and disco went down and got in the ring with him in birmingham you know as he was getting ready and uh like i, I went down there a couple times and just you know, you know we went out to sushi and shit but he was just hanging out down in Birmingham. And um, we were just, we were more concerned, like it, it, we were in the moment. Like I remember when he came back, and I, think, I think it was the garden, he came back and it was just, you know, it was, he looked he looked amazing, you know? And he, he, he was always uh, such a workhorse. And he just had, you know, he'd been gone a while. And it was just like, he picked up right where he left off and 
You know, he had he had had so many great runs with so many guys up there, and Paul was always really giving. You know, so. But 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 the consideration, though, of course, he's a great worker. All that stuff, we know all that, right? But his his marital position in the McMahon family has to be a consideration with you guys, as far as his future being in control. Yeah, I mean, but no, like we're not. In retrospect, yeah, it, it, it happened, but like nobody, nobody's thinking, wow, it's, it's Vince is always going to be in charge. Like that's the right, right. That that's why the that's why everybody got a bump last fucking week. Cause, but, but no, like, no, <laughs> he wasn't going fucking anywhere. No, like, hey, this is a good guy to have as a best friend right about now. No. No. I fucking think no, Vince ain't going fucking nowhere. <laughs> so just like you're always gonna what are you gonna be two, three? You're not gonna bat fucking clean up. That's just the way it is. It ain't gonna fucking happen. His positions o- over time, I mean, I the the verbiage and the you know, the corporate titles, uh, executive vice president of talent and live events, executive vice president of global talent strategy and development, then I Oh, actually, there was a step in the middle there. 2013 would have been executive VP of talent, live events, and creative. And so now he's doing his thing. Uh, about 2010, I'm going to say, is the first official corporate title that's handed down, which was executive senior advisor. Was that ultimately just like a talent type thing when you say executive senior advisor not on the business end but senior advisor on working with talent developing talent choosing talent am i i think at that time the ohio valley was up and running lean a little closer to that mike don't don't i know it's big and black but do not be scared of it um, i uh i I, uh, I i i think that um he was working i mean uh ohio valley wrestling was was up and running um they had that um Florida champ, I think, like the the first before yeah the it, Florida developmental yeah they had that know, yeah. and then so I th- I know he was involved in all of the, all uh of the phases of those and then eventually the performance center uh, was I think pretty much his brainchild. But the thing was also that Paul uh you know Paul was very instrumental in the like as they became more of a global uh entity you know we did uh europe we ran europe we didn't you know we mm-hmm. didn't did india did israel we weren't global we didn't go to south america we didn't go to fucking we, we, we didn't go to rome didn't go to paris you know i wrestled all those places on and in, in indies and uh so they started having you know rings and uh like you know put in these and like where they warehouse shit in each of these countries so they weren't dragging it around i mean so they were you know and, and he was he, he was in charge of a lot of just those small specifics on making the it just logistically logistically easier to globally run house shows oh that's interesting so be, when you got global there would be like a hub near certain places you were where there was a wwe ring to your specifications, because of right. course, years before it was whatever ring they set up in right. Puerto Rico or Mukesh wheeled a ring into you know Pakistan. And then, yeah, then we had we had an office in London. WWE had an office in London. You know, I mean, we started to, you know, the company really started it, and that was all after it, it it went public. I have never heard a bad word about him ever. And he, from the developmental guys that I've talked to, to, you know, the name guys. And I'm talking about off, of course, on camera. No one wants to say anything about Triple H. I understand that. But, like, even off camera, like, he's he's somehow just, like, always maintained a squeaky clean reputation. And it's not always as obvious as, well, he's a good guy. So, no one's – I've heard people I thought were good guys have shit talked about them by people that were jealous or, or – You'd have to meet his mother and father. 
Oh, tell me. His mother and father are like salt of the earth. They're, they're, they're just the two of the nicest human beings on the planet. His socialization process is, uh, I mean, as it's, it's close to leave it to beaver as probably you could have. Hmm. You know, I mean, it's just, it, it just, I guess when you don't go through life with a fucking backpack full of fucking baggage, uh, I think that maybe life's a little bit, uh, I didn't think such people existed, but I guess I'm glad you know, to hear I that I, I, people I, without baggage exist. I, he did, he just didn't have any, right? You know, he just never. You know, he had he had, it was almost like fucking. Uh, it, it was strange because I've just never been around anybody with no vices. You know, right? Like <laughs> like like wow, well, like. You're really fucking talented. You cut a good promo. You're fucking. You're funny as fuck. You, you you don't miss a workout, and you don't have any vices. Does that make them boring? No, no. He's funny as fuck. Somebody's he's got, a great he's got something. Some people, even if it ain't drugs or 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 some monkey on their back, people fuck their pets or something, right? Only in Florida, man. Right. So what do we bottle? Okay, let's let's have some kind of summation here. I, we want to make the perfect uh, professional wrestling uh, corporate executive slash worker slash creative. What do we bottle from Paul Levesque? Levesque. You don't pronounce the S, huh? Um, what do you bottle from him? Number one thing you you, you would bottle from him is his passion, passion for the business. And he's also fucking a student of the business. You know, I, th I think that's huge. I think that if you know, uh, if you know the history of, of, of most things, especially if you know the, uh, the downfalls of uh, corporations or uh, anything, if you know the history, then the, the chance of you re repeating that is, 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 a, is a lot uh it's very limited as opposed to, 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 you know, being somebody that like maybe was the 45th president that, uh, wanted the, um, the troops to be more like they were to towards Adolf Hitler. And then the general said, well, you know, they tried to kill Adolf Hitler three times. He goes, didn't know that. How about the fucking movie with, with fucking Tom Cruise? Huh? Remember that one? And then the fucking, I said to myself, I'm like, who the fuck goes sees this movie? The trailer's telling you that Cruz and his fucking cohorts are going to assassinate Hitler. I know history. I know that motherfucker didn't get assassinated. So what's the upside of me seeing this fucking film? <laughs> I know the finish. Could be speculative fiction. Uh, so, uh, historic, speculative historical fiction. I don't know. But a lot of, I mean, a lot of people are are, are students of the game. You know, uh, you, you, you've worked with people who who are great students of the game. I've worked with people. Jim Cornette, great student of the game, could talk for hours about any promotion and what worked, what didn't work, and that. But is, but is there some? Is he a great listener? Is he someone who is? He's got uh, an eye for talent. Okay, right. He's got an eye for talent. That's for sure. Look at the guys, you know, look at the people that he, he you know, he's kind of handpicked and, and pushed up on uh, on the WWE product on Raw. And they were just like, every time one of them went up there, man, I was just like, how quick can we, can we dismantle what got him over and fuck this dude up? Like, I just, you know, yeah. it was almost, it was just like when he got sick, when he had the heart episode. They couldn't fucking get down there and dismantle what he had built in NXT quick enough. I thought that was fucked up, man. Hmm. And I and just, what was the impetus for that? Why? I don't fucking know. I I I, you know, I, I asked Sean about it. You know, Sean Michaels, and he was just like, like you know, Sean's just you know, is is just is so changed. He's just not. He's not, you know, he's not a shit disturber anymore. He just, he does his job. He does it well, and he, he does the best he can, and he goes home to his family. Maybe today Sean wouldn't have been in the clique.
Yeah, he would. Not, we, a, we're, we're, not we've all, a politician and a shit stirrer. <laughs> no, but we're all fucking. We, we're all but we're all we're all different now. None of you fucking guys are click worthy anymore. You just got a show with the name on it. Oh, fuck, I'll take it. 